Could aspen trees be the answer to wildfire mitigation? Experts explain. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. This just in, Summit Health officials confirm two cases of COVID at Little Red Schoolhouse in Breckenridge, forcing the school to close for at least one week, sending dozens of students home for quarantine. This is not an outbreak. The county is investigating now to verify if the two positive cases had close contact before getting sick. School officials voluntarily shut doors. Little Red is the first local child care center to close completely for COVID on the final day of a long and grim month. Health officials confirm five local outbreaks since Labor Day, a record high after six months of pandemic, as caseload per 100,000 today is nearly 16 times higher than September 9th. Also closed right now is Summit County Jail. Sheriff Jamie Fitzsimons. One of our jail staff had tested positive for COVID uh, during a routine screening prior to a scheduled surgery. And this was down in Park County, so it kind of complicated things. Eight sheriff's employees had close contact with the deputy, forcing Fitzsimons to temporarily close the jail for staffing shortage, not an outbreak. It knocked out an entire shift of the people that this person works with. So when your bench isn't deep enough and there's nobody to send in the game, it changes the game. To complicate things, the deputy who tested positive had been asymptomatic. County officials are tracing and tracking now, but do not believe inmates were infected. A 25-year-old Aurora man serves 21 months in Summit County Jail for falling asleep at the wheel last October, killing two men from Oklahoma and injuring two women in a head-on collision. Adrian Delgado pleaded guilty to careless driving resulting in death and injury. He fell asleep traveling U.S. Highway 6 through Dillon early on October 3rd. The CDC reports at least 6,000 fatalities annually in the U.S. are caused by drowsy drivers. A morning accident at one of Summit's busiest intersections sent one man to the hospital with minor injuries, and both drivers went home with tickets. Dillon PD confirms two vehicles collided at the intersection of Highway 6 and Dillon Ridge Road when both drivers failed to yield. No one else was involved. Housing, social reform, and COVID recovery were top of mind at a virtual forum last night, attended by several Summit County Commissioner candidates and hosted by local social advocates. Democratic candidate Tamara Pogue running for District 2, serving Frisco and Dillon Valley. While Summit County can be tremendously innovative, it is fundamentally a very difficult place to raise your family. It is a place that often sweeps its most difficult issues under the rug and hopes that no one notices. Seven candidates total are running for three open seats this election. Tune in tomorrow morning for more. This week on the State of Summit, we learn how clear cuts and aspen trees might be our best defense against wildfire. This fuel break, literally along with air support and the firefighters, these subdivisions would not be standing here today. That was former Fire Chief Jeff Barino of Summit Fire and EMS in the hours after the Buffalo Fire of 2018 forced thousands to evacuate in wilderness. Flames came within feet of homes, but stopped when they hit a fuel break, one of the first in Summit's dense lodgepole forest. Ashley Garrison of CSU Forestry explains the concept. Summit County, we've got the legacy of the mountain pine beetle infestation, so we're we're working to reduce the the amount of dead trees, dead standing trees that are out in the forest, and we're also working to kind of big picture to really create a mosaic of forest types and ages and densities. This summer alone, ground crews armed with chainsaws have cleared several hundred acres in Keystone, Frisco, and Breckenridge neighborhoods. Bill Jackson of Dillon Ranger District. So every summer we concentrate on doing more fuels reduction across the district here in Summit County. Funding for these fuel breaks comes from the Forest Service, local towns, and Strong Futures, a million dollar taxpayer fund approved in 2018 in the wake of the Buffalo Fire. It keeps our firefighters safer by providing that buffer from water wildfire and um, you know it, it buys time for residents if there's ever a need for evacuation like we've seen with a couple of fires here. But fuel breaks leave scars where lodge poles again thrive becoming a volatile tinderbox in 25 to 30 years. One solution is aspen trees. We're up here at the Barney Ford open space site and we're planting 1,200 aspen seedlings. That was Caroline Schlegel with the Nature Conservancy, calling from a field at the base of Baldy Mountain in Breck, where the nonprofit has partnered with the town for an experiment in organic wildfire mitigation. Aspen hold a lot more water than a pine tree. And what we think they'll do is they'll change fire behavior, giving our wildland firefighters a better chance to defend 
our homes and our community. That stand is the first of its kind in the nation, where experts will monitor the aspens to see if they can thrive in former fuel breaks. You gotta start somewhere, and we're starting right here at Barney Ford. But we think that this is a potential solution that we could try across Summit County and across the West. Tune in again next Wednesday for The State of Summit on Crystal 93. Playing live right now at Sauce on the Blue in Silverthorne are all of these folks. Kevin Danzig, Tina Ferguson, Tyler Easton, Mark Schlafer, Carrie Nall, Sam Galgoon, and uh, Luis Leonardo Lopez on drums. That was Leon Joseph Littlebird with Summit Musicians Relief Fund. Today's live music is a benefit for the Smurf, supporting local musicians struggling in the summer of COVID. Music is live until 6 p.m. at Sauce on the Blue. In sports, today is opening day of the NBA Finals, Lakers vs. Heat. Tip-off is 7 on ABC. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, the Tigers golf team travels to state this weekend, opening Sunday in Colorado Springs, led by senior Riley Sabula, who shot 76 four over par at the Regionals Tournament earlier this month. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.